Hello everyone, uh, as Gary mentioned, uh, my name is Jose uh, Nihao Ma. For all the uh, Chinese students, uh, I can go just up to that, no, nothing, <laughs> nothing more. Uh, what I'm going to present is uh, still a work in progress because we are writing a paper with Gary about this subject. And we have been working very hard yesterday, almost a full day, and uh, uh, we hope to have uh, some final product, I mean, decent product by next week. Um, but this is something that I did uh, a data collection a few years ago, because as a Chilean by born, I am very much into football, soccer. So one day I was, uh, I remember that was May 2014. I was getting ready for the, uh, the World Cup, which, which was in June, starting in June, ending in July 2014. And I said, how can I take advantage of such a big event? And I devoted about a week, full week, to read about sport mega events uh, in the world and so on. Uh, so I read the literature, I, read, I, I searched for different uh, uh, constructs, scales and things like that, and suddenly they put together a questionnaire and said, I should take advantage and collect new data about this event. And then I said, well, what I'm going to be focused on? And one of my main pieces of research and publication in the last few years at that time was nation brand personality. So how to use the concept of personality coming from psychology to really identify what a country name as a brand is projected. So I said, I'm going to study if the brand personality of the organizing country, in this case Brazil, changes because of the World Cup event in Brazil. So that was the starting point. And I started to collect some, some data. And as I will show you, the main, the main points are uh, are focusing on the uh, perception of foreign people about the brand Brazil, but also the intention to behave and some attitudes toward the country. Because the literature is plenty of evidence that uh, the perception that you have about a brand personality has an effect on um, intentions to behave, what is called cognitive behavior and also uh, on the attitudes in general. So that's one, one thing. The other thing that was interesting to see is, would it be any different effect on people coming from a country or citizens of a country that is participating in the World Cup versus citizens of another country that is not participating in the finals in the World Cup? So that would be very interesting to see the degree of involvement that an individual may have with the event. That's, uh, also, there is another issue with involvement, dealing with, do I like soccer or football or not? So that would be another, another aspect to, to consider. And the additional aspect to consider is, how much am I influenced by what the media says during the event? of the image that I have about the country, from my pre-image to my post-image of the country. So this is more or less the uh, framework that I, will, I was using for this. So this is a presentation. Um, so I will go over, over some of the introductory uh, points, uh, mainly because some countries are using or the organization of mega events to improve the image of the country. So it's a very good thing. For example, uh, I remember when London organized uh, the Olympics in 2012, there was a huge push on the Britain image in the world, right? And so many countries are using this to put the name of the country on the map. So everybody knows where the country is. And because of that, it is expected that many people would like to travel to that country during the event or even after. Many people will be interested in buying products from that country because it's more familiar to us now. And maybe business people will be more interested in doing investment 
or some people might like to go to that country because they fall in love with the country because of the event and they would like to study there or to work there or even to live there for good. So there are many, many potential effects. So uh, the other thing is that the country might receive some benefits because of the organization and also the organization behind the event. In the case of the World Cup was FIFA. So at that time, FIFA was absolutely clean. It was a pure organization just organizing uh, tournaments. Because in 2015, we started to see some of the bad effect of the negative publicity about the FIFA corruption scandals. So there is a significant uh, relationship between image and in intent to uh, behave positively toward a country for example, uh, to visit, and so on. And also, there is an effect upon attitudes. Um, and why this is important in the case of Brazil? Brazil is a developing country. And most of the time, what is projected in the media is nothing about developing countries but negative news when there is a, or news that grab the attention of people, such as natural disasters, maybe crime, corruption, things like that. So organizing events, sporting events, creates an opportunity for some countries to really say good things about developing countries. And they have access to the media with that. And what is interesting is that when media says something, people tend to believe more. Why? Because it is supposed to come from a neutral party, the media, not from the country itself, or from the organizing um, uh, country or organization in that time. So that, that is uh, some of the supporting um, ideas about the, uh, the organization of mega events. And many countries organize events, mega events, because of the benefits or legacies, long lasting legacies for the organizing country. Here they have a list that is found in the literature, and you can see that, for example, infrastructure development. They put a lot of money in airports, roads, bridges, uh, urban regeneration, uh, nation building patriotism, improve awareness and image of the country in external audiences, and so on. Increase of international tourism especially after the event, because usually the, any of these events attract many tourists, but the long-lasting effect is with those that are coming after the, uh, the event, and also they increase the trade of the host country. So there are plenty of benefits. So one of the questions at this point would be, would it be possible for Brazil to take advantage and receive all these benefits? Or on the other side, are the costs higher? for Brazil to make the country, like any country like Brazil, to think twice about putting their name as a, for, for any B in organizing such an event. So let's see a little bit about Brazil. This is the passion in a stadium. This is uh, uh, Maracanã Stadium in uh, Rio de Janeiro. And you can see how people are really passionate about the event. So this is uh, just uh, to show you that sports like, like soccer, like football, moves massive number of people. What are the numbers that we found about Brazil in terms of statistics, not in terms of the, the, the actual study? Well, <clears throat> more than five billion attended to all the fests in Brazil during the World Cup. So a huge number of people. Another interesting stat is 171 goals were scored during the World Cup. Very interesting. 7.2 billion US, uh, US dollars in tax revenue uh, received by Brazil because of the investments made in the World Cup for the World Cup in 2014. 
more than 3 million people attended the 64 matches that were played during the, the World Cup. More than 3,000 balls provided by Adidas were used in the World Cup for the games. So things like this uh, make us to think that maybe this was successful. So huge numbers. And even the amount of food and beverages portions served in the stadiums. So it was a lot of money going uh, around because of the uh, or organization of this event. So at the surface, surface, we can see that it seems that the World Cup in Brazil was very successful in terms of sport. And actually it was for FIFA. FIFA got a lot of money with the, or with the tournament in, in Brazil. A few other things that are interested is the number of accreditation for uh, journalists that were provided in Brazil, more than 16,000. So you can imagine 16,000 journalists going to Brazil, and those were mainly for the uh, printed media. So you can imagine the number of reports that were issued or published from Brazil for the whole world. And interestingly, I, we were able to find some statistics like this one, that there were over almost three quarter a million pieces of news published within three months, April to July in 2014, about Brazil and the World Cup, with the coverage worldwide. So it seems that every journalist on average provided about 46 pieces of news for different countries. So the whole world was aware of what's going on in Brazil. However, based on uh, a blog that was dealing with uh, news about Brazil, it was founded that the negative pieces of news about Brazil were as five times more than the positive ones. So, in reality, what happened, the media, independent media, provided a lot of negative news and criticism about Brazil. Not only about sports, remember that Brazil lost 7-1, seven 7-1 to, one, seven one to uh, Germany in one of the uh, second or third round, but there were so many other problems being highlighted by the media that were happening in Brazil. Political problems, economic problems, social problems. And so the whole media, the whole set of uh, journalists were providing uh, very much uh, uh, exactly, they show the picture of what was happening in, in uh, Brazil. Uh, some of the problems that were present in Brazil at that time were some strikes, uh, people protesting on the streets, they were against corruption, and so the media was fully of negative news about Brazil. So in this context, what were the questions that we, I had at that time that created the fundamental focus of the study? First, did all the efforts that Brazil put there had a positive effect? It is estimated that Brazil invested $15.15 billion in the organization of the World Cup. And what happened with the international image of Brazil? Because the literature is full of evidence that whenever you organize a mega sport event, then there are so many positive effects after. Because you are working toward um, increasing the image uh, for good, actually, for the uh, uh, country. Uh, the other thing is, is, was it possible to use the brand personality, Brazil, and to measure the impact that that could have on the uh, creation of an image by citizens of different countries? And most interestingly, what would happen if I measure or ask individuals before the World Cup 
and after the World Cup about the same object which was Brazil. And here there is a contribution, a modest contribution to the methodology because when you check for this type of literature, many events, usually, usually they have only a single measure either before or after the event or they have a longitudinal study but with different samples. So they interview individuals A before and they interview individuals B after. So they try to identify any change. In this case, it was decided to interview the same individuals. So if I interview John Smith before, I was focused on interviewing John Smith after to see the, any effect on his own perception about the image of Brazil. So the main objective of this study was to measure the international image of uh, Brazil by means of brand personality uh, uh, approach and the potential impact of this um, image on attitude and economic behavior such as all the intentions that anyone could have about Brazil. And we used some contextual variables that could uh, be uh, having an effect on the study such as, for example, uh, involvement um, the type of news that you were exposed to, which we label um, balance, because the news could be positive or negative, and uh, so we uh, analyze also the potential impact of some of the demographics and so on. But one of the important things that we did is we included also uh, personality, individual personality as one of the issues. So, uh, how much the individual personality of every single respondent could have an effect, or what is the effect that that could be, could have on their perception of the image of Brazil and the intentions to, to behave. So, a little bit about the literature now, before going into the results and the, and the methodological approach that it was followed that just for the sake of uh, understanding the context, uh, country image is a mental picture that the best a person may have about the country. And how a person is forming that country image? Well, some of the ingredients or the, the elements that cause that formation is media exposure. So the media can have an effect of the way that you see a country. And if we link this a little bit with what happened during the World Cup, the media was more negative than positive about Brazil. So that was interesting. So we should see, if that is correct, some effect on the way that people see in Brazil. Also, there is a positive image uh, relationship between country image and cognitive behavior. So the literature supports that and uh, a country and event media exposure can stimulate that relationship. So information from the media might be something important to consider. So therefore hosting a mega event can impact a country image through the media publicity that it receives. So this is um, the uh, theoretical foundation for this. So as I mentioned before, publicity is so important because it's seen as uh, an unbiased source, because it's not funded by Brazil in this case, but media is independent and they can say anything that they want about the country. So the other element that was considered in this study was nation brand personality. And nation brand personality is part of the country image. So in other words, we can use nation brand personality to measure country image. And this is a definition that I published uh, in 2013 in JBR, uh, Journal of Business Research, where I propose a definition of what is nation brand personality. And nation brand personality is a combination of positive and negative traits that we can, uh, a country or a brand can have. Uh, and therefore, um, that might explain why people feel good or bad in terms of attitudes toward a country. And how do you form that? It's 
mainly based on actions, intentions, and opinions of the country's governments, companies, and institutions, and the society at large. So if we link this with what the media can be presenting, then it is interesting that the media can talk about any of these things, and if those things are not uh, in a good shape in the, in the organizing country, then the media will expose your all the weakness that uh, a country may have. Uh, and interestingly, the literature also supports the idea that national brand personality is a good predictor of attitude and intentions to behave. So I, I was expecting in that sense that this would work nicely if we uh, use it as a way to measure country image. So interestingly, uh, many studies dealing with country uh, image uh, and covering uh, mega events uh, were using longitudinal designs, but those were a little bit rare. Most of the studies were based on one single measure, or one single uh, uh, study, either before or after. And among those, as I mentioned before, doing a longitudinal approach, most of the samples were different between the one used before and, uh, and after. So in that case, this study was trying to, um, to fill the gap by using the same sample. Uh, the other problem with the, uh, with the literature found, probably I see a problem because I, I'm coming originally from a developing country, but most of the studies and the literature relevant, uh, available, is coming from studies done with uh, US samples. The majority, not all of them, but the majority. And uh, there was no study so far, when I did the data collection, that was focusing in a point of comparison between an audience coming from a country that was participating in the event versus an audience of a country that was not participating. And in the World Cup, soccer World Cup, or, or FIFA World Cup, is it is evident the difference because there are only 32 countries participating in the World Cup so far, and there are about 200 countries in the world. So there is an audience very much involved, and there is an audience, audience that is not that involved because their uh, home country is not taking part in the, uh, in the event. So one of the things that uh, was considered was the involvement theory. Uh, involvement theory is measuring um, the degree of involvement that the individuals might have with the event or with the sports being played in the, in the event. And involvement theory has been used in many cases for different purposes, including segmentation. Um, the idea of the involvement is based on two main areas. One is time and energy. Uh, that the individuals devote to the, uh, that activity, and the other one is dealing with the affective versus cognitive part or element that might be relevant for the individuals to see or to, to show how much involved they are with the, uh, with the event. Um, involvement has been used in the literature to measure some impacts, including moderation, in the relationship between different variables, and researchers have used uh, involvement theory for different purposes, and they have used different scales to measure. Some of the scales are unidimensional, some of the scales are multidimensional, so there is a huge variety of different alternatives on which scale to use for that. And uh, as I mentioned before, there is a cognitive and an affective part of the involvement that can be related to this kind of uh, studies. Lastly, um, before going into the more details about the real study, um, there was a review about the potential theories that might explain the effect of media, of the media uh, use uh, on the individuals. And I found four different theories. I'm not gonna, going to use all of them with Gary in our paper, but uh, these are the, the theories that might explain the effect of organizing uh, a mega event and what the media is saying about it and how individuals are reacting. For example, the first one is the spiral of uh, silence theory, and mainly this theory is saying, if you have an idea 
about something and the media, for example, is talking frequently the opposite thing about the same subject, then you tend to believe that your position is very unpopular. So because it's unpopular, then I try to avoid expressing that publicly. So in other words, if the media is talking about negative things about Brazil, and tomorrow again negative, and tomorrow again negative, then even if I have a positive view about Brazil at one point, I will end it up saying bad things about Brazil after, or I will refrain myself of saying anything. So in other words, as it is mentioned there, people sometimes prefer to remain silent to avoid social isolation when they have an idea that is not popularly accepted or discussed in this case in the media. The other is the uh, cultivation theory and it's talking about watching television. Because usually we increase the number of hours that we watch television when, when there is a sport mega event going on in the world. And it says that uh, watching television, including TV news, affects people's views of the world. So again, if the media is covering some of the things that are happening in the host country, then that will have an effect on the view of audiences about that country. And um, the third uh, theory is the knowledge gap hypothesis. And it says that usually people in the higher uh, levels of status, they tend to have a more influence and they get more inform the information quicker than the lower status. So therefore, the most influential people in a society will have been affected in this case with the negative views about Brazil, and they disseminate that one after for the, the lower social classes. And finally, the agenda setting, setting theory is, uh, is saying that media can make certain issues easier for people to recall because they are talking about those negative things all the time uh, and the media have been uh, found to, be, to have an effect, significant effect on how people view other nations specifically. And, uh, and it seems to be in a strong impact on that way. So, a few reflections before explaining the methodology. Some people say publicity is good publicity. All publicity is good publicity. But is it that true? Because publicity can be positive or negative, right? Um, prior research have found that negative publicity decreases purchase likelihood, sales, and also net present values of a firm. So, wow. Based on the facts only, we can say that we should expect a decrease in the uh, image of Brazil. Also, extended literature says that negative publicity has four times more effect than a positive one. So, and if you take the previous information that there were five times more negative publicity times four is 20, compared with one times one. So at the end, the multiplying effect is a lot bigger with negative publicity than positive one. Uh, negative publicity also affect customers the most when they are highly involved with the product. So in this case, it's a relationship with the involvement uh, theory. And uh, again, uh, country images can be formed by means of media exposure by people. So I would just mention a few things. For example, um, that FIFA assigned the organization of the World Cup in 2014 to Brazil, seven years before. And in Brazil, they were delighted with the news. Delighted, all the expectations were very good about the benefit for the country and so on, but uh, even the tourism organization was expecting 
a lot of money and returns based on tourism. Uh, as a result of the World Cup, uh, Brazil also invested not a significant amount of money for the country, $40 million only, in the campaign for the uh, organization of this uh, uh, FIFA World Cup, and also for uh, the uh, Olympics that were held on Rio de Janeiro in 2016. So $40 million in a campaign, worldwide campaign is not too much for two big events like this. Um, so everybody was expecting something good for Brazil, especially one of the main objectives of the country was that to change the perception that people have about Brazil being a country with soccer and samba. Because many things about the carnival in, in Rio de Janeiro in February and soccer or football. So they wanted to change that image a little bit to be a more comprehensive country that, that can offer better things or more things for the international uh, markets. So this was a very quick the theoretical model used for the study. So Brazil brands personality affecting attitudes and intentions as well as soccer involvement and home country participation. So I will, I will show you the um, uh, results in a minute. Uh, by the way, this was for the pre-mega event and there were some hypotheses for the post-mega event. For example, adding, interestingly, the type of news being exposed during the tournament. So these were the hypotheses, mainly explained by what you saw in the, in the models recently. And uh, so mainly was nation personality exercise an effect on the attitude and intentions to behave of uh, these foreign audiences upon whatever is coming from Brazil. And the other one, it was the involvement, and the other one was the media exposure, and so on. <laughs> so this is the method, and this is, might be interesting for the uh, doctoral students. Uh, so the method was used, was a questionnaire, was the, the instrument, but it was a survey, online survey, hosted by um, SurveyMonkey. And the questionnaire was used in a Spanish language. Why? Because people targeted with this study were Colombians living in Colombia and Peruvians living in Peru. Colombia was participating in the finals. Peru was not. Was eliminated in the qualifying in South America. So this was interesting because it was possible to compare the attitude and intentions and perceived <coughs> image of Peruvian versus Colombians because they might have been exposed to different amount of reports, media, and so on. And they were less involved with the tournament, the Peruvians, than the Colombians. So this was the longitudinal study. A study why longitudinal? Because the same people that answered the question as pre-tournament were requested to answer a new questionnaire post term. So the, sum, the final sample size was 157 people. It might sound like a small sample. I recognize that. But you have no idea how difficult it is to get people answering one questionnaire and imagine how difficult it is the same people answering a second question. So, of course, we got many more people answering the first time, but very few in the second, in the second time. But what is the positive thing about this is that we are comparing the, same, the opinions of the same individual pre-tournament with what was happening three or four months later after the tournament. So 91 from Colombia, 66 from Peru. Uh, this might also indicate something. Why there were more Colombians interested in, in answering my questionnaire? Because Colombia was in the tournament, was in the final. Peruvians said, okay, but Peru is not there. Why should I answer a questionnaire dealing with a World Cup? Right? So it might be one of the limitations. All citizens were older than 18 and living at that time in the corresponding country. So they were living in Colombia or in, in Peru. <coughs> mm -hmm. 
So the measures that I used for the questionnaire were taken from different sources in the literature. Uh, the eight, 18 items to measure behavioral intentions toward Brazil is in a paper that I, I published in 2013. Uh, the 50 items to measure Brazil's grand personality were taken from another paper that I published in 2013 in a different journal. Uh, there were some items measuring soccer involvement by Tchaikovsky in 1985. And there were several questions about demographics. Also, there were additional questions in the post uh, survey. Uh, for example, behavior towards searching information about Brazil in different type of media, evaluation of the news received from the event from very negative to very positive, and participation in social network related to the uh, mega event. And how many matches the person actually watch about the, uh, in the tournament out of the 64. So this is the uh, quantitative study that I did after. The, uh, the purple country is Brazil. So as you can see, there was the uh, tournament. The blue one is Peru. And the green one is Colombia. Both of them are neighboring countries with Brazil more or less the same this geographical distance, both of them using the same language, but Colombia participated in the final, Peru not participating. So it's a very interesting combination for exploring the results. Uh, so the Colombia sample was 91, Peru sample 66. So these are the preliminary results that they're dealing with the uh, demographics, the profile of the demographics uh, of the sample. Uh, so gender was in a combined sample, 54% were male, 45% were female, which is a little bit biased toward males, but of course males are usually more interested in football than women, right? Uh, age in Colombia was almost 40 years of age, in Peru was 29 and the average was 35, so it shows clearly that most of the sample were, were not students. Education, it was a little bit biased toward uh, university and post-university studies and marital status, 50% were single altogether, the other ones were married or in other condition in their social uh, uh, marital status. So this is the set of uh, different uh, items that I use for measuring the global attitude or the overall attitude toward Brazil. And interestingly, um, I'm going to compare what happened with the measures in every country in, uh, in the event. So for buying products, those were the items that I use for traveling purposes or for, and for developing, developing ties for the country. So interestingly, for the doctoral students, the alpha, the Cronbach alpha, for the measures about attitude are quite acceptable, above 0.7. Uh, for buying products, above 84%. For uh, travel, above 80, and about 81 for the one dealing with developing ties. This is this contributes to the psychometric properties of the scale. So, in other words, the uh, alpha reveals how much related are the items that are used in every of the constructs. Interestingly, these are some of the results. For the whole sample, look at this. In a scale from one to five, the overall attitude about Brazil was 3.59. What happened to the overall attitude after the event? So it went down in both countries. So the difference was 0.2 and very significant. So something happened. So the overall attitude about the country went down significantly. What happened about the intention to buy products? From 337 to 328, it went down. Significantly, 5%. Intention to travel. 
also went down. And what happened with the, uh, the intention to develop ties? Look at that. Any relationship? Do you want any relationship with Brazil? Well, maybe before, but look at what happened after. So this is the biggest drop. So in other words, it seems that I have received a huge amount of information and I don't want to have anything or I reduce my intentions to have any relationship with, uh, with Brazil. What happened with the brand personality? Well, the brand personality of Brazil was composed of four different uh, dimensions, sincerity, competence, extroversion, and status. And this is very much aligned with uh, a paper that we published this year with Gary and a few other people, that we argue that there are core dimensions or kind of uh, um, dimensions that must be present in any measure of brand personality. And those are sincerity, uh, competence and status. So what happened with the measures in this case? The uh, alphas are very good for sincerity and also the AVI values, which is for the doctoral students, the AVI value is something that you have to report to nowadays in all the papers that you want to publish. Why? Because it measures, it measures the square of the uh, standardized coefficient in any relationship being measured with structural equation model. And those coefficients, most of the time, are required to be above 0.5, and the minimum accepted is 0.45. So the AVI values were good for that. Uh, competence, again, very good. Uh, extraversion, very good. And status, also very good. So psychometrically speaking, again, this scale is very strong. And this can measure the image of, of Brazil. And the, uh, look at what happened with the mean. So the sincerity perceived in Brazil before the World Cup was 3.24 out of 5, after 3.16. It dropped, but not significantly. But all the others, they dropped significantly. So the degree of competence that I perceive in the brand Brazil went down from 375 to 360, very significant. The extraversion projected by the brand Brazil also went down from 411 to 3.95. And status dropped also. So in other words, most of the dimensions by means of which I measured the brand personality of the country, Brazil, went down also, from before to after. Another interesting thing is that I did confirmatory factor analysis of the uh, dimensions. So all the scores are very good because, most of them actually, because the minimum normally accepted is 0.9. And also they are accepted when you are a little bit below that, nobody said anything, anything uh, against. But what was interesting, I, uh, we analyzed for invariance. So is it possible to conclude that the same way that we measure the image of Brazil before the World Cup is still valid to measure the image of Brazil after? Yes. So we did the uh, invariance test and the p-value is not significant. So which means that the structure of the scale used before is not different from the one used after. So in other words, we can compare. We can compare what happened previously to the World Cup with what happened after. So the image of Brazil, and this is going back to the hypothesis, the image of Brazil uh, decreased significantly, even though Brazil invested $40 million in trying to improve the image uh, before and during the World Cup. And also the attitude and the cognitive behavior, which are the intentions toward Brazil, decreased from pre to post uh, main events, and therefore the hypothesis number one is not accepted. Because we were expecting, in this case, to have an improvement because of the 
whole investment and developing of this uh, and hosting the, the tournament. Uh, this is also a hierarchical regression table, and hierarchical regression table for the doctoral students allow you to compare uh, the significant contribution of different sets of variables. So in this case, how much demographics contributes to the overall attitude, how much Brazil brand's personality and the contextual variables contribute to the overall attitude, and then again in the second column, so the first four numerical columns are for the pre-event, the other ones for the post-event. And what is significant here is, for example, if you have family or friends living in Brazil, then there is a significant contribution upon the overall attitude. So it seems that you, have, you tend to have more positive information in that case. Uh, but none of the other ones was significant. Look at what is the contribution of Brazil brand's personality upon overall attitude. Most of the, all the dimensions are significant. 29% of the overall variance of attitude is explained by the brand personality. And the contextual uh, variables is country participation. So if your country is participating in the event, then you tend to have a more positive attitude compared to the other case where your country is not. So overall, the 36% of the variance in overall attitude is explained by these three groups of variables where the most significant one is the personality as we were uh, expected based on the literature. So all the blue ones are the significant ones. So as you can see, in most of the cases, competence is the most significant contributor to the uh, different aspect of attitude or cognitive behavior. So, this is in words, the same thing that I explained before. So things that are relevant, age is the only traditional demographic uh, variable that is affecting the uh, image of Brazil and the intention to, to behave, especially uh, for uh, younger individuals and who are willing to have a positive view about that country. The other thing is having family or friends living in a foreign country tend to improve the image that you have about that country. Um, the other thing is that when compared with demographics and uh, behavioral variables, Brazil brand personality dimensions are the, by far the best predictors. So in other words, the country image is the most significant uh, predictor of attitude and cognitive behavior. So if you receive a damage in your country image, then that will in turn trigger some negative effect on your intentions to behave. Uh, interestingly, soccer involvement was not significant in the pre-event. Uh, so which means that it's more important if your country is participating or not in the final. That tends to be more important uh, as I mentioned here. So this is the result of the hypothesis. So two were approved or accepted if you want. Uh, one was not accepted uh, in the results. And the other two were not possible to respond until we have data from the uh, post-event. In the post-event, the situation was quite or more or less similar because age again is the most important one, having family or friends, competence is still the most important predictor, and so on. And uh, soccer involvement now, post-event, has a significant impact on attitude and cognitive behavior. So now that we don't have the World Cup, so people will, that really like soccer, they will tend to feel more inclined to go to Brazil. Because Brazil is a soccer country or a football country, right? Uh, home country participation has a non-significant effect after. So this creates a very interesting marketing, marketing strategy. So who should Brazil 
focus on before the World Cup to go to Brazil? Should it be the country, people from the country participating in the event or those not participating in the event? And what will happen after? Because after the, uh, the World Cup, there is no effect on um, intention to, to go to Brazil or to develop ties and so on. Uh, it doesn't matter if your country participated or not. So it seems that one of the problems that Brazil may, may have had is that probably they invested a lot of money in countries that were not significantly open to receive the information because their country was not going to the World Cup. Uh, and the type of news each respondent was exposed to has a positive effect on the overall attitude and cognitive behavior. So, if you receive more positive news, then your attitude improves. But what happened with the news? They were in the majority, in the majority were negative. So people was receiving a negative effect because the variable was moving in the same direction of the type of, of news. So when uh, tested the hypothesis, most of the hypotheses were accepted and one was rejected. So the image of Brazil significantly decreased from pre to post event. Now, what are some of the conclusions? So if you were a country, let's say that you are the, uh, the president of a developing country, and you have the option to be for organizing a May event, would you go for that? Or you should think twice? Well, what happened in the case of Brazil, developing country with several economic, political, and social problems got negative effect on, ter in, on terms of brand image. So probably, probably nowadays, Lula da Silva, who got the, the, the World Cup for Brazil, is uh, somehow upset for what he did, because he's in prison also, as you can see. Not for that, but for other reasons. What happened? The $15 billion that Brazil invested in the World Cup were taken from the budget of social uh, areas in Brazil. Money that was assigned previously to uh, social benefits. So people was demanding, where is my social benefit now? I don't care about the World Cup. So that's why all the strike riots and things like that during the World Cup. So Brazil, Brazil brand personality scale, the first conclusion is, is very nice to measure with four dimensions, sincerity, competence, extraversion, and status, very good psychometric properties. So these are some of methodological conclusions. Uh, this supports our paper that we just published this year about saying that sincerity, confidence, and status are the most important and um, they are the core dimensions of any brand, brand personality that is measured. Uh, the model that we developed for measuring the uh, brand personality is invariant between uh, Colombia and Peru. Uh, the scales to measure um, overall attitude and cognitive behavior were with good psychometric properties as well. And interestingly, the intentions to travel to Brazil were, were receiving the most, the highest scores by the respondents. So it was uh, uh, all the time that the main interest, not of buying products from Brazil, not of developing ties with Brazil, but just traveling. It seems that Brazil is a good place to go but just as a tourist. Uh, the overall attitude and cognitive behavior also drop in the case of Brazil. So Brazil brand's personality is a good predictor. The variances explained are significant. Oops. Um, the impact of uh, 
is more evident before the mega event than after, particularly from the brand personality. The most important dimension is, as a predictor, is competence. However, competence is not this, the dimension that received the highest score. But that's the most important for people to have a better intention to develop. So Brazil is not seen as a very competent country. However, for people, that's the most important dimension to really have a positive view of our country. Extroversion is one of the, uh, the dimensions receiving the highest score. Brazilians, Brazilians are very outgoing, but it has uh, more impact before the mega event rather than after. Extraversion, uh, status is the weakest dimension for Brazil. Brazil does not give status to people when they consume that brand. So they go there for different reasons. So this will not be very good for countries where there is a high power distance, which is Brazil, uh, Colombia, and Peru. They have high power distance. Why? Because when people from high power distance countries consume products, they are looking for a status. And Brazil does not give status to them, or not enough. Uh, sincerity produces mo moderate but contradictory results, so it's not that, that relevant. Demographic variables have, have a very limited effect, so other contextual variables are more important. Um, gender and, and education have almost nothing to do with the uh, image and intentions in the case of uh, Brazil. Uh, having, having family or, or friends living in the foreign country or the host country of the mega event might have a significant effect on the way that I see the image of the country and so on. So what are the, this is the last slide, what are the managerial implications in terms of marketing? from this study. Well, some of them are organizing mega event does not eliminate the problems that the country might be suffering in terms of social, economical, and political type. So if you are a country, a developing country, planning to be for organizing a sport, a mega event, just to cover all the bad things that are happening within the country, don't do it. It's not gonna happen. And surprisingly, the same thing happened to India when India organized in 2010, I guess, at the uh, Commonwealth Games. They had the same results of this case in Brazil. So countries experiencing internal problems should not go for organizing mega events alone, at least. Uh, negative publicity towards the organizing country have a detrimental effect on its external, external image. I was demonstrated by the data. Unfortunately, if you are organizing an event, a mega event, you cannot control media. You control only the media that you uh, can uh, accredit to work in the country, but you cannot control what they are publishing. So you should do a campaign with the media somehow before. External audiences are clearly receptive to that publicity of the organizing country previous and during the mega event. So it seems that somehow people are exposed to bad publicity and that creates a problem. And they tend to believe that. Why? Because media is seen, is seen as a neutral uh, entity that can publish real or facts and therefore people tend to believe that. Uh, home country participation have a moderate positive impact on attitude and cognitive behavior. So participating countries should be the preferred target and easily to, or more easy to convince to travel to the mega event. So in this case, Brazil should have devoted most of the 40 million dollars that they put aside as a budget for this event to those 32 countries or 31 other countries participating in the event. Because people are more willing to go instead of spending the money equally worldwide. Uh, 
individuals who are involved with the type of sport played at the mega event should be targeted also because they tend to uh, be affected as well. And also, the last one, marketing campaigns should highlight the positive personality dimensions of the country organizing the mega event. So people likely will travel to Brazil because of its high score in extroversion, which is significant predictor, but it's not the most important. But external audiences will improve their attitude and cognitive behavior, behavior if Brazil improves more than this one, which is the most significant predictor. So we are doing things in the right way here. We are productive. We are efficient. But sadly, what happened in reality is, for example, one, one bridge in one of the organizing cities in Brazil for the World Cup collapsed during the World Cup. And why? Because it was deficiently built. So the image that was conveyed most of the time was we are not competent. We are not efficient. There were riots against the president in Brazil, Dilma Rousseff which finally had an impeachment and she had to quit the position as a president of Brazil after the World Cup. So this is the study. As you can see, there are many, many ways to write a paper about this because uh, what I presented was uh, all the results that we have found significantly and we are trying to focus on the most relevant points in, in a paper now, but now I'm open to any question if you have any. And thank you so much for your attention.